So Ben, I said to uh, the people at the festival before I chose to do this, I said, I, well, not choose, I'm here because I live for this, but I said, you know, I want to do something with Ben because we didn't do one last year and after our television explosion, um, I said, we have to do something. The people will come and there's empty seats. So anyway, <laughs> big. Um, I, I said, let him pick the film, because he lets me choose all the, the horror films, and we're also doing a Mother's Day marathon this year, so I get to choose all that stuff. He's very selfless with me. But he chose this bonkers motion picture, <laughs> which is called Butterfield 8. And I had never seen it. Oh, God. You'd never seen it? I figured no. you'd loved it. Well, um, <laughs> when you see like, clips of it, you go, oh, and then you see the whole thing, you're like, I didn't realize this is where this thing was going. Um, but, and it's a good, it's entertaining. I watched it twice. Because, but I mean, we everyone knows that Elizabeth Taylor plays a, a prostitute in this, right? They but, can't quite bring themselves to call it a prostitute. No, they can't. She's, the, she's one of those many prostitutes who won't take money. No kidding, it's ridiculous. And she's sitting on a bar and there's men around her. That's not a prostitute. And I know it's Liz Taylor and you're not going to see her like, you know, in bed with somebody. You see her with Lawrence Harvey, who you'll see. Mm -hmm. is, but it's not clear. It's not clear. The movie's not clear. <laughs> Like was in the beginning, you see, she's, she's outraged when Lawrence Harvey leaves her money. Yes, but was he a client first, and then they, what, uh, where, what, uh, and then she's got Eddie Fisher, who's like the gay best friend who's arranging musical theater, but he's not gay. It makes no sense at all. He's not. I mean, and then and then he's got the girlfriend, and he's very nice, Eddie Fisher, in this. He's very, very nice, kind of sweet. And you know, he gets slammed for this. This is really the only significant role he had in the movie. He's not that bad. I think he's very good in it, actually. Yeah. And supposedly they had a lovemaking scene that they actually made love. They were actually having... Oh, my. Your daughter's here. They were actually having sex. Um, <laughs> there was a child here to make me feel guilty. Um, but the, the, they were actually having sex, and they supposedly cut the scene. So just real quick, Whoa. when we were last night uh, watching... Uh, what were we watching last night? The movie that I introduced yesterday that had the, the train? Penny. See, Penny Serenade. So we're watching Penny Serenade, and there's a, a moment where uh, the train pulls out, and, and, and Irene Dunn doesn't get off the train. She stays in the in the cabin with Cary Grant, and I've updated my daughter that they, they, they have a baby, and as soon as the train pulls away and the screen goes to black, uh, my daughter says, well, I guess I know how they got the baby. So <laughs> she gets it. She knows. She knows. She knows. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is, it's unclear. So you'll see it. You'll get it when you watch this movie. And by the way, so Elizabeth Taylor won the Oscar for this, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was her fourth consecutive nomination. Uh, Raintree uh, County. Uh, uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Yes. Uh, suddenly last summer. Oh, yeah. And this well, there we go. Four in a row. Yeah. Written and directed by your your, your, your great uncle. Yeah, that's um, right. Also, the Joseph. other Mankiewicz. That's what we call Joe. The other man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he. You know, I love Suddenly Last Summer, and supposedly she got this Oscar because she didn't get it for Suddenly Last Summer. But I don't think that's. And she'd that's, been she'd been ill, and and it had been four in a row, and she feels like it was a sympathy vote. Probably. Well, at least she knows. At least she, at least she feels that way. At least she's honest about it. Because she hated this movie, by hated the way. Right. Hated it. Even after she won the Oscar, she was like, "It stinks." <laughs> I hey hated it. <laughs> I Butterfield A. Are there any messages? So you didn't know I did this, Taylor, huh? <laughs> It's actually Florida's on chilly winters, but go ahead. so <laughs> this is why I picked it. You did. This is why. This is why. But I, it was entertaining. I did love it. So thank you for this gift of Butterfield Eight. I got a couple of objections to this movie. Okay, go. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Lawrence Harvey, who is it's a fight every time I say Lawrence Harvey, not to say Raymond Massey. It's been that way for 20 years at TCM. You know, basically the same age, black hair, names have the same cadence. Raymond Massey, Lawrence Harvey. I just, it's in my head. I know that they're not the same. There's nothing about them that's the same, but it's hard for me Wait, every time. they're not the same age. Raymond Massey's way older than Lawrence Harvey, don't you no, think? I don't think way. Well, I think older. I'm way older than you, but You're yes. way older than just about everybody in this room. But I look fantastic! <laughs> I am older than everybody. 
everybody in this room. I also confuse uh, just uh, Dana Andrews and Joel McRae. Uh, so much so hmm. that I went up to Wyatt McRae and said that I really thought that his father performance in the Oxbow incident was terrific. Oh. That was a little embarrassing. It was, but I knew it as soon as it came out of my mouth. Right? I was like, I've done it again. I've done my Joel McCrae Dan Andrews mistake. Well, no one told you to go up. So, anyway, so my uh, objection is that we get Lawrence Harvey and he's, uh, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's an objectionable character in this movie. I and mean, why she is in love with this guy, that bothered my wife, but she just said yes. Uh, uh, was like, why this guy? She could have it. She looks like Elizabeth Taylor, right? Mm -hmm. And so she's with Lawrence Harvey, right? Yes, yeah, Lawrence is with Lawrence Harvey. Yeah. Right? Not Raymond Massey. And then we learn at the end when his wife, uh, Dean Merrill. I love Dean Amaro, by the way. Uh, when she, Beautiful. She Lovely starts calling him Wes. How is his name Wes? His name is Wes? Wes. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is not what his name is. Well, that's, that's one no. of the many reasons why this movie is just completely nuts. <laughs> it's just completely Anybody here named Wes? Anybody? Your name is Wes? His name's not Wes. It's... Nobody is really hot for a guy named Wes. But, Wes but, Anderson. Like, I'll tell you something. Uh, Lawrence Harvey, like, like is 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 conventionally good looking. He's a handsome dude. But there's no heat. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no heat. Like, there's no, there's no like, hmm. oh, you know, you don't go, wow, that's a guy. I, hmm. I don't know why she's in love with him. No, it doesn't make that part doesn't make sense. Uh, that's one. It's a major flaw of the movie. I mean, he's a heel and 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 doesn't have the. The thing that might make a woman ignore the fact that a guy's a heel. By the way, a guy who had that quality was going to play the Eddie Fisher part, uh, but but Liz insisted on oh, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, David Jansen, Ooh. my favorite. Ooh. I love David Jansen. David Jansen was going to get that he, guy had heat. He, he did have heat. I agree. Here's my question: Did they were they married at this point, or is this where the affair they were started? Married. They, were, they were married they were at married. this point. Yeah, yeah. So the affair started before. Yeah, because she went right after this movie. She went to make you know a clean Cleopatra, Patrick, and that was seven and a half years, oh. and, and then. The other man would say that one. That she yeah. met that other yeah. guy. Um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the other guy. <laughs> the other guy. Um, yeah. uh, so, um, the, uh, and then the other thing you object to, which is a great little thing in movies, is she's calling the exchange. She calls Butterfield 8. And she says, hey, it's Gloria. Uh, listen, if uh, Mr. Uh, what's his name in the movie? What's Wes's last name? Uh, Liggett. Liggett. She goes, if Mr. Liggett calls, I want to take that call. Uh, reach me wherever I am. I know. How the hell are we going to feel? There's no cell phone. <laughs> what are they, where, wherever she thing, is? Wherever she is. And what, yeah, you find me wherever I am. I mean, you don't, I don't know where you're going to be, Liz. How would anybody know where you're going to be? Really? Do you have a beeper? It's four beepers, too. <laughs> I mean, I, how? Do you have like, it's, it's, you have an antenna up your ass? I mean, where, where, how? <laughs> And then there's an inside joke in the movie next to the bank and elevators in the building. There's a, uh, uh, a directory for the building there, and I think she's maybe going to see her, her therapist or whatever. Oh, yes. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and it says there's a list of names, and we see the bees, and the last name of the bees, it says Ben Hur. In quotes, but there's no room, and that's just because the movie has uh, been the you know it was a, 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 a released the year before, right? That's all it was. It's like that's the inside joke. It's not a great joke. No, it's yeah. not a great joke. And hmm. I, I, what, she went. She was going to see her therapist, right? She went to see her therapist, right? And, and by the way, yes. uh, uh, there's a, there's a wonderful uh, actress here tonight uh, named Joan, Joan Bennett uh, Benedict Benedict Benedict. Benedict. Benedict Steiger. Joan Benedict Steiger. Where she's up she there. played the secretary to the psychiatrist, and she was Miss Taylor's stand-in because Miss Taylor was missing for a few days off this off this picture. And if some of the back shots are Joan oh. Benedict Steiger. At one point, Steiger, because at one point you were married to Roy Steiger, to Rod Steiger. Rod Steiger. To Roy, at one point, she was married to Roy Steiger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Him too. <laughs> you did it again. And the great Rod Steiger, that's fantastic. Oh my gosh, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah, and so the, some of the back shots of Liz Taylor, it, it, it's Joan. It's it's Joan. Because, and yeah. you know, that's, um, she was missing for a few days. I'll be away, don't find me, you know. Where, no matter where I am, just let Joan do it. I won't be there. Eddie and I are together, and we're not coming back to this stinking picture. 
worst Liz Taylor ever, but I'm glad you're laughing. It's got, it's got energy, it's got heat. Okay, I think we should... Uh, I, think, I think let's show the picture. Show and the I picture. thank you for this, and you know I adore you, that's all. I adore you as I well. You and Laurie and I, uh, next week in Atlanta, uh, at the end of or a couple weeks, uh, we're taping uh, Mother's Day uh, programming. Which Mother's Day Marathon, yeah. That's right, which of course will show up in Mother's Day, which I, yep. uh, is in one of the months. Yep. And then... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's in May. In May, and then in October, Mario's back for more uh, uh, horror films. We'll yes. tape in that... Uh, 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 at the end of April, I love being too. here. I love this place. I love you. I just love this. This brings me so much joy. And I'm a miserable bastard. This <laughs> brings me so much joy. You have no idea. It's the biggest highlight of my life. Your husband's here. He's not. He's my husband is here. Bastard. He knows. He knows. Uh, Jerry. All right. Uh, enjoy. Uh, let Mario Pantone. Get back with everybody. Enjoy the picture.